Welcome to the Elephant Engineering Solutions YouTube channel. Today's video is the first of a three-part series that will help you use layers more efficiently. In this video will discuss how to set up your layer name format. Part two of this series will address how to set up layers in your template drawings. And part three will be focused on layer filters. Okay, let's get into the first tip, your layer name format. Now, most of you are probably using the National CAD standards or some form thereof. The National CAD standards uses a prefix at the beginning of the layer that's called the discipline designator. For civil engineers, this prefix is C, for architects it is A, and for surveyors it's V. I propose that you remove the discipline designator from your layer names. Many of you have been married to the National CAD standards for many years, and what I've just said could possibly be quite scandalous. Please hear me out. In my opinion, the discipline designator is unnecessary. The layers belonging to different disciplines are going to be naturally separated by the drawing file to which they belong. You would not keep architectural layers in a civil drawing or mechanical layers in an architectural drawing. The architectural layers will be in a separate architectural site or floor plan that can be x-referenced into the civil drawing or vice versa. The layer name format I propose is similar to the National CAD standards minus the discipline designator. It's composed of three fields, the group field, the subgroup field, and the status field. Let's start out with the group field. The group field groups related layers in the layer manager. This is all about organizing your layers in the layer manager. Using the group as the start of your name allows you to find a particular layer by typing the first letter of the group's name in the layer manager. Even with the discipline designator prefix, your layers will be grouped since the layer manager will list the layers alphabetically but you'll be forced to scroll through the list or use the search bar to find the layer you're looking for, as opposed to simply typing the first letter of the group's name. It's not uncommon to see drawings with hundreds of layers, and the process of hunting through this list to find the layer you need can eat a lot of time. Your standard groups should be broad in nature, so the group encapsulates all aspects of that work. Some example groups are Anno, conk for concrete, asphalt, water, storm drain, etc. Let's look at an example drawing. Okay, you can see in this example, I have a number of different groups, starting with anno, asphalt, building, barricade, concrete, etc. Now, let's say I want to find my sign layer. I click in the layer manager and simply type in S. And it takes me right to the group starting in S. Or let's say, for example, we want to go to the wall group. I'll type in WA, and it's going to take me straight to the wall group. Your standard list of groups should be standardized and well documented, so all users become familiar with this system. Now, there will inevitably be situations when you need to create a new group. Make that group as broad as possible to contain all work related to that group. Let's take an example from my work. I typically don't work on projects with railroads, but on a recent project, we needed to show a railroad spur into an industrial site. For this situation, I created a new group called Railroad, and that contained all the rails, the railroad alignments, the ballast, the equipment, all the items related to this railroad spur. I'm sure in your line of work, you're going to encounter situations like that. Just remember, keep the groups as broad as possible to encapsulate everything related to that group. You want to avoid creating layers that are clearly part of a larger group. Let's say you need to create a V gutter layer. Don't make a new layer called V gutter. This would obviously belong to the concrete group. So there will be cases when a layer is a true outlier and has no group. This is some object that's truly a one-off and there's nothing else on the site that's related to it. In this case, that object would be its own group. Okay, let's move on to the subgroup field. The subgroup, as I've alluded to earlier, further organizes your layers within each group. 
the subgroups can be less regulated and can be added more freely depending on the unique characteristics of the project at hand. I would recommend that you avoid adding too many subgroups. There's a happy middle ground between too much organization and not enough. Layers are a good way to organize drawing objects, but you can go so far that it becomes more onerous than it is helpful. Let's look at an example. Let's say we are working in the concrete group. We would have the subgroups top face of curb, top back of curb, lip, walk, V gutter, etc. Moving on, let's talk about the status field. The status is a single letter suffix on the end of your layer that identifies the scope of a particular layer. Some example status codes are D for demolition, F for future, T for temporary, X for not a part of this plan set, or number for the phase number. The status allows the separation of objects based on their scope. For instance, you may have a site with two phases and you want to show the future phase for reference in your plans. You would probably want to show the future work on gray colors instead of dark. Copy these layers needed for the future site and add an F in the status field. You can now change the color of the future layers to gray. The strategy only makes sense for situations where you have a handful of layers that need a suffix. If you are developing an entire future site plan, it would make more sense to make this its own base drawing and then X reference it into the current phase. Okay, that's it for the first of these three videos. Um, stay tuned for parts two and three. Part two, again, we'll discuss drawing templates and part three, we'll discuss layer filters. Please subscribe if you'd like to be notified as new videos become available. Please check out my website at www.elephant-eng.com or click on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and take care.